This is a painting I did a couple of years ago. It's called Done in Denim. And it's been hanging around in my office actually. And I've been looking at it um, over the past few months and there's an area in it that um, I am really drawn to. And it's this little corner here. I just love this corner. I love the squareness of those shapes. I love those stripes. Um, I love the blue against the brown. And so in my sketchbook, I'm going to try and do something along those lines. So here I've got my colours. I have um, got a bunch of cool colours and warm colours. And then I've got my black and white sitting next to each other. And this is how I always arrange my palette. To put the warm colours together and the cool colours together in an area to mix them in the middle. And in this case I've got an area where I can add other colours if I want to along the way. So once I've got my paint sorted, I want to start off with just doing some drawing. And I'm using these um, wax crayons. And I'm writing in here, Darling Mine. And this is what, how my parents used to sign their letters to each other when they were courting. And so it always sticks with me and I love that little phrase, darling mine, it reminds me of them. So I'm just putting those in um, at the very bottom. They'll get covered over completely, but it's just, I don't know, it's a nice way to put some marks down so that the white paper is broken up. And now in with some orange paint. And I'm using the colour shaper so that I can spread the paint around. I can get areas of thin paint that, I, that is transparent. I can get thick paint and I'm using saturated and desaturated warm colours here. And now in with some acrylic ink and I'm splattering a little bit of water on there so that I can get it running over the top and once again I'm going to create thin films of this ink over the top of the warm paint just to get some different uh, marks. And here are some little details to show you the marks. You can still see a little bit of the crayon underneath and um, the paint in various thicknesses. Um, so this is just creating a lovely surface to work on. And now I want to introduce some shapes. But choosing the right shapes, they have to uh, contrast with what I've already got. And I've got very curvy organic shapes. So these square ones work a lot better and um, I've put them in with a dark blue. I'm using a range of blues because they are cool and they contrast with the very warm colours I used in the underpainting. So I'm just having put in those square shapes, I'm bringing in curves and now I'm bringing in line with my pencil and I'm using just a, a stencil and ad libbing a bit with it as well. I'm just making loose marks, just building up the surface all the time. Now I've got to find some sort of design in this work. So I'm coming in with a really dark brown. And um, this, remember my initial painting that I was looking at uh, had that dark brown in it with the blue so that's why I'm using this brown and I want to create really big defined shapes now I want to contrast also curve with straight edges uh, so the top part of the painting is predominantly going to be dark with those blue shapes and I want to make sure that each of the blue shapes is quite different And now I'm bringing in the light. So this is really giving me a very strong design in this painting between light and dark. And now what I've got to do is I've got to add some interest into the light areas. Those, because I built up the surface originally, um, those shapes that I've created in the upper part of the painting are really quite interesting already. They're, they're made of lovely, they've got a beautiful surface, lots of interesting marks within them, and they're all different. Now I have to do something like that, but different again in the bottom part of the painting. So using the same colours that I have up the top, um, the, 
the oranges and the warm colours and the blues um, and some browns. I've just created a little bank of stripes there and as well as having them very ordered I want to disrupt them as well which is why I sort of break into the stripe and that um, makes them a little bit um, irregular like the shapes in the upper part of the um, composition have as well. Now going right to the bottom of the page I need to bring some darkness in there and I need to um, bring the eye over to the left hand side of the composition so I've got to bring something, a detail or something to look at over on this side as well. So I'm doing that with some warm paint and I'm relating it to the stripes but not making it exactly the same and uh, just trying out different uh, paint effects and things to, to get something that is satisfying to me. So just thinning that up a bit and making that area there a little bit more textured, it's nice. And then I'm bringing in a very thin film of the ink over the top of the brown. I don't have that anywhere and that's different from the rest of the, um, the brown area. And lastly, bringing in those words that I started with, Darling Mine, but very differently this time. I want them to be uh, something you notice when you come in close, so they're just a little detail. And I want the bottom of that edge on the right hand side to be a little different from, to be lower than the one on the left. And so that's the final painting. And coming in close, you can see that um, you know, the surfaces have been treated differently, they've got some interesting marks, there's depth to the work, and um, thick and thin areas, loose accidental marks, as well as very intentional sort of um, shapes that are left there. And I'm quite happy with the piece in the end. And I think it does relate to that original um, corner of that larger painting that had been winking at me in my office for months. <laughs> so it's an interesting way of taking something and analysing what it is that I liked about that and then working it into a, into a sketchbook um, composition and seeing where I can take it. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with the result.